Greetings, I'm Dr. Dan. Welcome to our final episode of What the Health in the Year of 2020. We've reached our final Monday where every Monday, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, we go live with the latest and greatest and tried and true health trends in order to help us all get healthy and stay healthy for a lifetime. Wow, what a year it has been. I had uh, one person remark as they were talking to their husband over the weekend uh, to go back and reflect that we've only had two months this year, uh, February and January at the very beginning of 2020 that were quote unquote normal before uh, all the lockdowns, all the changes to our lives, uh, all the um, uh, restrictions that took place because of the COVID-19 virus. So with that being said, I want to take a minute, I want to really reflect on three main points uh, throughout the year, um, you know, or, or really three main points um, to summarize, uh, you know, some thoughts uh, and what my thoughts are moving forward uh, as we continue to hopefully move back to some sense of normalcy as uh, spring hits uh, in 2021. Uh, but the, the first thing that I wanted to touch on, uh, and really something that struck me very early on in the beginning, is that uh, they talked about the spread of COVID-19 through the possibility of asymptomatic carriers, meaning that someone who was completely healthy showed no signs or symptoms of COVID-19, uh, such as coughing, uh, such as shortness of breath, fever being one of the main uh, symptoms of having the COVID-19 virus. Um, an asymptomatic person, they told us very early on, could lead to the spread of the disease. So that's why they were quarantining and putting everyone on lockdown very early on. Well, a couple studies came out over the past few weeks here. One of them actually came out of Wuhan, China, uh, the original um, you know, start of the COVID-19 virus. And that study actually uh, said, I'm, I'm hoping I get my numbers correct here, but out of 1,172 asymptomatic positive COVID-19 cases that they found in this study, zero. Okay, out of over a thousand people who had asymptomatic COVID, zero of them had any transmission passing on uh, an infection to another person. Wow, think about that for a minute. Um, I'm not saying that we didn't know what to do at the beginning, but I'm saying this as more information comes out. It's very, very interesting to see uh, what we always knew to be true, uh, that you know, someone who's asymptomatic, which really is just a reclassification of a healthy individual, their system is fighting and functioning, um, and they have no symptoms of a virus, uh, they are unlikely or a 0% chance of passing an infection on to another individual. So that's point number one I want us to reflect on. And again, a couple of those studies have come out very recently. The second point that I really want to harp on, I have, I brought this up once or twice in the past, but as we reach the end of the year, I was really waiting for this number to come out. Um, and we are almost at the end of 2020 here. And that is the all cause mortality rate, meaning what is the total amount of deaths in the United States and across the world compared to the previous years? And what we are finding, we are on track, okay? Over the past five years, we've been about 2.8 to 2.9 million deaths in the United States. Um, you know, and that's total. You know, regardless of the cause of death, that is total. In a pandemic year, you would expect for something to actually be called a pandemic that you would actually see an increase uh, in the total number of deaths because you're going to have your normal amount of deaths from things like heart attacks, from stroke, from cancer. You're going to have your normal amount of deaths from uh, you know, flu infections. But 
If you're in a pandemic year, then you should see a spike or an increase in the total number of deaths uh, if it is truly a lethal virus. Well, here we are at the end of 2020, and 2020 is on track to end at about 2.8 and a half to 2.9 million deaths, where we will see zero increase uh, in an all-cause mortality rate from the previous several years. So what does that tell you? I'm not sitting here saying that COVID does not exist. That would be absolutely ludicrous. It absolutely does. But what I am telling you is that it is not the lethal virus that we thought it was in the beginning. Okay, so we have to understand uh, that case fatality rate and the total number of deaths did not even have a small blip on the radar, um, even with COVID-19 compared to previous years. So with that being said, leading us to the final point, nature knows best. Okay, one of the you know very famous lines out of uh, Jurassic Park, uh, you, you know, uh, one of the docs on there said, life finds a way. Nature knows best. It always, it, it knows how to calculate. It knows how to do all this thing. So we look at some of the studies that have come out in terms of preventing or decreasing the severity of illness related directly to COVID-19 and the four big vitamins that they are now recommending. I've talked about three previously, vitamin D, zinc, and vitamin C have been touted and have have been touted throughout the uh, you know natural uh, health promotion specialists uh, since the beginning of this pandemic, um, but have now recently been uh, touted by the you know bigger governmental agencies, the FDA and the CDC uh, and the World Health Organization, that you should be taking those as either a preventive or a reduced severity of illness related directly to COVID nineteen. They have now added a fourth one uh, called quercetin, okay? I'm not going to spell it for you. I'll put it in the comments down below, but quercetin, okay, um, that is also, it's a bioflavonoid, okay? Bioflavonoids are a class of antioxidants. It's a whole nother lecture. We don't have to get into that this evening, but you have to understand how nature interacts. It's never linear. There is always a circular, systematic interaction of all things in your body. Okay, so quercetin is a natural uh, bioflavonoid. Um, you can find it in uh, different foods that you eat. It is in a large range of, uh, of healthy, just over-the-counter supplements. Um, you know, you'll see it in most of your uh, one-a-day or any sort of supplement that is for uh, natural for antioxidants. Um, you know, anti-inflammatory. Um, you will see quercetin as an ingredient in there. But really, what happens is quercetin as as the key to open the door to your individual cells, which allows zinc to get into the cell and start doing its job, uh, you know, with uh, with really helping to make sure that um, your you know your white blood cells and your immune system are doing uh, the job of keeping a virus uh, contained, mitigated, and ultimately uh, destroyed within the body. And when it does that efficiently and effectively, you reduce the severity of illness and you reduce Reduce uh, the possibility of transmission to another person. So, again, thank you to all the amazing healthcare workers and all the amazing um, uh, you know fields uh, that have worked together throughout uh, this entire uh, ten months, getting us through. And we haven't seen the end of it, but I do see the light at the end of the tunnel uh, that we are coming towards the end as we see um, you know the the case fatality rate continue to decline, and uh, we see uh, you know hospitals having things under control. Control. And uh, if you're a fan of the uh, artificial immunization or vaccination, it's coming down the pipeline and should be available for you uh, should you choose to go that route. So, as always, okay, covered a lot tonight. I want to thank you so much for sticking with us throughout 2020. I hope I shared something with you throughout this year that at least made you go, hmm. 
interesting. Um, or maybe I shared something that really helped you implement some change in your life uh, in helping you and or a family member to get healthy and stay healthy. That is always our objective, our, admis- uh, our mission at What the Health, going over the latest and greatest tried and true health trends in order to help us all get healthy and stay healthy for a lifetime. I am Dr. Dan, and I will see you next Monday, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, in a new, happy, healthy, and blessed year. Thank you, my friends. See you next time.